Word on the street is some of you guys in HVAC want to learn refrigeration. Hey, I'm telling you right now, if you learn it, you make yourself more valuable. One of the things you really need to know in refrigeration is how defrost works. Three part series here on this defrost time clock and how it works. These terminal designations down here sometimes confuse people. I'm gonna go over terminal X today and how it operates so you can understand it from a time clock point of view. So I wanna pump the tires on Jobber. That is a CRM tool I'm using to run McCready HVAC and refrigeration services. Jobber allows me to quote, it allows me to schedule if I want, it allows me to invoice, keep track of all my money and all my customers in one place without any paper involved. If you guys wanna step into the modern day to keep your business organized in the skilled trade, you can check out Jobber. I've got a link, it's getjobber.com forward slash HVAC know it all. And I will put that link in the summary of this video as well. This is an ICM time clock. It is a solid state clock. It doesn't have mechanical parts. It's all one circuit board with some logic. So on the clock here, we got some pins. Each individual pin pushed down is equivalent to 15 minutes. So we got three pins pushed down on each. We got 45 minute defrost cycles and we got four per day. So if we hit a defrost cycle here, that's 45 minutes and we're fully defrosted in 30 minutes, our coil is warm, then why stay in defrost? Let's kick out a defrost and go back to refrigeration mode and keep that box temp at set point. That's where terminal X comes in. Connected to terminal X, what you'll see a lot of times is a defrost temperature switch. It's like a clicks on, like a snap disc, and it's mounted to the evaporator coil on one of the end bends. During our 45 minute defrost, Within 30 minutes, if that clicks on or that snap disc senses that that coil temperature is relatively warm, it's gonna to wanna to kick out a defrost early. So what's gonna happen is there's a contact that's gonna close and it's gonna send power to terminal X. It's gonna tell this solid state device, hey, we can kick out a defrost, let's get back into refrigeration mode. Once we get back into refrigeration mode, we start removing heat from the box. The coil temp relatively is gonna get colder and that snap disc now is gonna open back up. Okay, so let's get to the second video of this ICM defrost time clock. So I'm gonna tell you how we initiate defrost and what happens in defrost. You can see here we got three pins down. That is a 45 minute defrost. As the time clock comes around to this arrow time clock now, it will initiate defrost. As we talked about on the last video, it will come out of that defrost if the defrost termination temperature switch tells it to, it'll come out early. While it's in defrost, what's gonna happen is the refrigeration cycle will shut down. In most cases in refrigeration, the compressor will go through a pump down and it will turn off. This green LED will shut off, the red LED will come on, showing that it's in defrost mode. So what's gonna happen here is terminal three is gonna send out a signal. In most cases, the signal will land at a contactor coil. The contactor will pull in. Now that contactor is for defrost, so it's going to have resistive heat or electric heat elements embedded in the evaporator. When that contactor pulls in, those elements are now gonna get warm. So the other thing we're gonna do here, see this fan terminal right here? We are gonna cut power to the fans as the ice starts to melt into liquid and the liquid's running down the coil. The fan is going to pull that liquid off the coil and throw it out into the box. The other thing that's gonna happen too is droplets are gonna land on the fan blade and probably freeze and throw the thing off balance. So in low temp refrigeration, you do not want the fans running. Here's part three on this ICM defrost clock. In the first two videos, we covered defrost termination, then we covered what happens when we go into a defrost cycle. What happens when we come out of a defrost cycle? That is probably the, the easiest part of this. The defrost cycle will either terminate by time on the clock, as we've set it here for 45 minutes, or will come out on defrost termination by a temperature switch like a clicks on disc that's mounted on the evaporator coil itself. So if we come out by time, the clock will run its course and we hear a click. So what's gonna happen here is the signal on three going to our contactor coil for the resistive heat. That signal will stop and we'll have no more resistive heat. Our red LED will go out. Our green LED light will come on. We'll send a signal out terminal four. Most cases in refrigeration, it's gonna go to a liquid line solenoid coil. The solenoid valve will open up, it will relieve pressure into the suction line, the low pressure switch will close, and the compressor will start. So what about the fan now? We do want the fans to come on, but we wanna delay the fans a little bit, because what happens if we turn the fan on and there's still water running down the coil? Well, it's gonna throw that water out into the box stuck to the fan blades. It's best to have a time delay built in for the fans, so the coil, it gets cold, it starts to freeze the remaining water that's on the coil, and then we turn the fans on so we have no jeopardy of throwing that water out 
into the box. So 